All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to this Athenian Stranger tutorial video where today we're going to look at a lesson on transformations involving translations. This is a geometry lesson covering TEKS 3A and 3B. We'll start with a four question warm up. In the first question, we are asked to solve a system of equations using elimination. All right, so what we're looking for here with these two linear equations is where they cross. We're looking for the coordinates of where they cross, and we'll put them here. And we're asked to solve using elimination. So we have to eliminate one of our variables. And we'll eliminate the y variable here by multiplying through the top equation, distributing some term through each term of the top equation such that this 2 becomes a 12. Because then I can add together 12y and negative 12y and eliminate the y variable and then solve for x. And we'll multiply through this top equation by 6 because 6 times 2 is 12. Okay, so we will distribute 6 through each term in the top equation, which gives us negative 42x. plus 12y equals 90. And then we write the remaining equation just as it appeared. 9x minus 12y equals 9. 9x minus 12y equals 9. And now we'll draw a line underneath both equations, and we will stack add, right? Negative 42x plus 9 is negative 33x. 12y minus 12y is 0. And 90 plus 9 is 99. So we'll rewrite what's left. We have negative 33x on the left equals 99. I can isolate the x variable by dividing through by negative 33. And the negative 33's cancel on the left, leaving x by itself equal to 99 divided by negative 33, or negative 3. And now I'm just going to plug that negative 3 back into our second equation here to find out what y is. So I'll write 9, open parentheses, negative 3, close parentheses, minus 12y equals 9. 9 times negative 3 is negative 27, minus 12y equals 9. Let's add 27 to both sides to get rid of it on the left side. And I now have negative 12y equals 36. Dividing through by negative 12, we'll isolate y on the left. The negative 12s cancel on the left, and y equals 36 divided by negative 12, or negative 3. So the coordinates of the intersection of these two lines, or the solution to the system of linear equations, is negative 3, comma, negative 3. Moving on to number 2, we're asked to factor out the greatest common factor. Let's put parentheses around this entire expression, and divide through by negative 9. Negative 9 is the greatest common factor of all three terms in the trinomial. And that means we pull out a negative 9, just like that. Let's rewrite our resulting expression. Negative 9, open parentheses, negative 90, a to the fourth, divided by negative 9, gives me positive 10, a to the fourth. Negative 63a divided by negative 9 gives me positive 
7a, and negative 9 divided by negative 9 is plus 1. Close parentheses. And that's all you do for that. Number 3, graph the solution of this system of inequalities. We have to remember a couple of rules about how we read these inequality symbols. Greater than or equal to implies that we have a solid line with filled in points. And because it's greater than, we will be shading above that line. For the second inequality, we're given a greater than symbol. And that implies that we put a dashed line with open circles at points. And because it's greater than, we shade above the line. Now let's plot these points. I'll plot the top inequality in blue. My y-intercept is negative 2. So I circle in a point there. And now my slope is negative 3 over 1. So that would be fall 3, run 1, like this. But I could do it in reverse because I don't have space in this graph. I can go up 3 and to the left 1. And it's a, it's a perfect mirror of what I'm doing. So up 1, up 2, up 3, over 1. At negative 1, comma 1, I can plot another point. And I can draw in a straight line, a solid line, because it was greater than or equal to. For my second inequality, I'll do in red. I have a y-intercept at 3. And I'll put an open circle there because there's no equal to symbol here. It's just greater than. My slope is 2 over 1. That's rise 2, run 1. Okay, up 1, up 2, over 1. Put an open circle here. And now I can draw a dashed line passing through those two points. Like this. We see the solution to that system is actually plotted, but we're going to graph in the full solution at this point. Looking at our first inequality, I'll be shading above the blue line. And for our second inequality, I'll be shading above the red dotted line. So that means I can only shade in this area that's bounded by both lines. That's this area here is the solution to the system of linear inequalities. Just like that. Number four, factor out the greatest common factor and then factor the quadratic to find all zeros. So the beginning of this problem is exactly like number two. We're going to find the greatest common factor that we can divide out of all three terms of the trinomial, in which case we will divide out four. And remember, we'll bring a 4 over here. So let's rewrite this expression. 4, open parentheses, 4x squared divided by 4 is x squared. Negative 28x divided by 4 is negative 7x. And 24 divided by 4 is 6, plus 6. Close parentheses. And now what I'm looking for are two terms that add to this middle coefficient and multiply to this constant. So I need two numbers that add to give me negative 7. And those same two numbers have to multiply together to give me positive 6. Those numbers would be negative 1 and negative 6. Negative 1 plus negative 6 equals negative 7. And negative 1 times negative 6 equals positive 6. So 
let's write 4 open parentheses x minus 1 close parentheses open parentheses x minus 6 close parentheses to find the zeros I set each of these factors equal to 0 x minus 1 equals 0 and x minus 6 equals 0 and now we just solve for x plus 1 on both sides for this first factor the solution is x equals 1 plus 6 on both sides for this second factor and the solution is x equals 6 so the two zeros are 1 and 6 that's the end of the warm-up part but since I'm right here at the homework I'll go ahead and do it for homework you're asked to complete problems 5 and 6 so let's work on number 5 factor and write as a perfect square binomial right that's a special type of process that we're going to follow we have a problem in number 5 in that we have a leading coefficient in front of x squared so we can't factor like normal the first thing we have to do is multiply the leading coefficient of 4 by the constant term of 9 4 times 9 equals 36 and what I need are two numbers that are identical two identical numbers that add together to give me negative 12 and those same two numbers have to multiply together to give me positive 36 they have to be identical so the same two numbers would be negative 6 and negative 6 negative 6 plus negative 6 is negative 12 and negative 6 times negative 6 is 36 so what we do now is we write this out like this we write 4x squared minus 6x minus 6x plus 9 I haven't changed anything negative 6x minus 6x is negative 12x all I've done is split that middle coefficient into two separate terms and now I'm going to factor by grouping I group these first two terms and I group these next two terms right here what I'm looking for is the greatest common factor from this binomial right here 4x squared minus 6x and the largest factor would be 2x so I'm going to factor out 2x from this binomial let me rewrite this so you can see what it is I have 2x open parentheses 4x squared divided by 2x leaves behind 2x negative 6x divided by 2x leaves behind negative 3 close parentheses and now what I'm going to do is factor out the greatest common factor from this second binomial right here in the case of this second binomial the greatest common factor would be negative 3 if I factor out a negative 3 here's what that will look like negative 3 comes out here open parentheses and now negative 6x divided by negative 3 leaves behind 2x 9 divided by negative 3 leaves behind negative 3 close parentheses and now I see something interesting I have here 2x 
minus 3 and 2x minus 3. So if I write this out as a pair, I have 2x minus 3 times 2x minus 3. That can be rewritten as 2x minus 3 squared. If you were to expand this binomial using FOIL, you would get back to your original trinomial. And that is why this is a perfect square binomial, because it's the same term multiplied by itself. Number six, factor by completing the square. Our first step is to add 13 to both sides. And we are left with 5x squared plus 10x equals 15. The next thing that we do is divide through by the leading coefficient. So I'll divide through each term by 5. Five x squared divided by five is x squared. Ten x divided by five is two x. And fifteen divided by five is three. Now, this next part of completing the square asks us to take the middle coefficient right here, the thing that's in front of the x, and divide it by two. Over in side work, I will take 2 divided by 2, and that gives me 1. And now we square this quotient 1. So 1 squared equals 1. What we're going to do now is write x squared plus 2x plus 1 equals 3 plus 1. This quadratic e expression can be written as a perfect square binomial. x plus 1 squared equals 4. And now to get rid of this squared term, I will take the square root of both sides. And remember, when we take the square root on this side, we will have to do plus or minus. Taking the square root of a squared term just leaves behind what was inside the parentheses, x plus 1, equals plus or minus the square root of 4, which is 2. And now I'll find two different solutions for this by subtracting 1 from both sides. And I have x equals negative 1 plus or minus 2. My first solution is x equals negative 1 plus 2. Negative 1 plus 2 is 1. My second solution is x equals negative 1 minus 2. 
negative 1 minus 2 is negative 3. That means that this quadratic equation crosses the x-axis at 1 and at negative 3. We can verify this using a graphing calculator, like this here. And what we'll do is we will type in 5x squared plus 10x. And now I have to be careful. I don't want to put minus 13 because there's a 2 out here. I need to subtract 2 from both sides. So I'll write minus 15. And now we can graph it. If we zoom in on this a little bit, we can see better where it crosses the x-axis. And we see that it crosses the x-axis at x equals negative 3 and at x equals 1. Looking at the table will show us that where y is 0, x is negative 3, and where y is 0, x is 1. That's it for the warm-up and the homework. And now we'll move on to the lesson for the day. This is a guided notes activity. And we will fill these in together. Today we're going to learn how to translate a figure on the coordinate plane. Our vocabulary for this is as follows. Translate. Same basic meaning. as when the word is used for languages. When you translate from English to Spanish, you are moving from one language to another while preserving the original meaning. In geometry, translating just means moving something around without changing anything else. Translate. The same basic meaning as when the word is used for languages. When you translate from English to Spanish, you are moving from one language to another while preserving the original meaning. In geometry, translating just means moving something around without changing anything else. Here's the notation for translations. Notation. If the original point is called P, the new point after translation 
is called P prime. P prime is called P prime. P prime. The single apostrophe is called prime. Let's look at this again. Notation. If the original point is called P, the new point after translation is called P prime. This P with an apostrophe next to it is called P prime. The single apostrophe is called prime. The second vocabulary word is pre-image. Like the name implies, a pre-image refers to the shape and location of a figure before it's translated. Pre-image, like the name implies, a pre-image refers to the shape and location of a figure before it's translated. Here's a visual pre-image. We start with segment PQ. That segment is translated to segment P prime Q prime. Notice here that these dotted lines each share two things in common. They both have these little dash marks and they both have right directed arrows. And what that means is that both of these lines are parallel to one another and that they are of congruent length. Looking down in this area, we see that segment PQ is the pre-image of segment P prime Q prime. Over in this area right here, we see that segment P prime Q prime is called the image of segment PQ. So we have the pre-image, that's this segment right here, then translation occurs, and after translation we have the image. Note, distance P to P prime is equivalent to distance Q to Q prime. All that is saying is that this distance traveled is the same. And segment P P prime is parallel to segment Q Q prime. All that means is that this segment here from P to P prime and this segment here from Q to Q prime are parallel to one another. It also means that segment PQ and segment P prime Q prime are parallel to one another. Segment or distance P to P prime and Q to Q prime are collinear. Segment P to P prime and Q to Q prime are collinear. Let's take a look at the written form. Here is an example. Triangle ABC is translated
to form triangle A prime, B prime, C prime. That means that triangle ABC is the pre image. of triangle A prime, B prime, C prime. And that means that triangle A prime, B prime, C prime is the image of pre-image triangle ABC. Number three, blank is the name of a figure after it has been translated. And that would be the image. The image of a f the image is the name given to a figure after it has been translated. Finally, let's take a look at vectors. Vector. A vector is a quantity that tells you how far and in what direction to move something. A vector is a quantity that tells you how far and in what direction to move something. This means vectors give you two things. Magnitude and direction. Vector. A vector is a quantity that tells you how far and in what direction to move something. This means vectors give you two things, magnitude and direction. Magnitude is how far to move something, and direction is where to move something. Let's look, take a look at vector notation. Vector EL is written like this. You write E L and above E L you draw an arrow going to the right like that. Let's look at subpoint I. Vectors contain both initial and terminal points. For vector EL, the initial point is E and the terminal point is L. The way we write vectors is in component form. When we want to express both the magnitude and direction in both the horizontal and vertical dimensions. Component form. Vectors have horizontal
and vertical components. written like this. What you do is you put this bracket symbol. It looks like the less than symbol. And then on the other side of this coordinate, you put a close bracket symbol. It looks like the greater than symbol. So where you would imagine the x value would be, this is the horizontal movement. And where you would imagine the y value to be, that is the vertical movement. Let's take a look at an example. Vector EL 10, 7 tells you to move the initial point E, 10 units to the right, and 7 units up to point L. In this example, E is the initial point. And L is the terminal point. That is it for today. We got those notes written and we completed a four question warm up, reinforcing our algebra skills and a two-question homework assignment. In the next video and in the next lesson, we will take the knowledge that we've gained today about translations and that vocabulary, and we will apply it in problems. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this video was helpful to you. If it was, please like the video. If you have a question, leave it in the comment section. And please make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so you are always updated when I release new videos. Thank you.